Good afternoon. I'm Larry Kamer, and this is my channel, The Fly Time Philosopher. And this is a place where I like to tie flies and think about ideas. Uh, as you know, I've been working on a series of flies, um, nine flies specifically, uh, in three uh, colors. Uh, a light color, kind of medium, and a, and a dark. And I've chosen kind of an oyster and a leprechaun and a sunset uh, colored yarn from uh, the uh, yarn uh, tying uh, company uh, affiliated with the uh, uh, Tenkara Attic, uh, Tristan Higby. Um, yeah, as you can see, I've gotten several flies uh, uh, in each category uh, so far, so I thought I would just add a little variety. I was hoping to um, start uh, adding slightly different colors, same types of flies, but slight uh, shades of difference. That's mostly uh, for my own sake. I don't think it makes any difference to the uh, trout, but... Um, um, so I've uh, gotten a, uh, an array of uh, yarns, and I'll show a picture here um, of those and the variations in the color. So I have kind of light, uh, maybe some uh, towards some brown and olive colors, uh, red and, and darker red. Today, uh, I'm going to tie an Idaho killer bug. This is another Tristan uh, variant. He seems to have quite a good luck with it. And uh, so I'm using a uh, flame um, yarn. Uh, I'm going to add a little um, black hackle to it. And uh, I'm going to start off with uh, a bead uh, at the head uh, so it'll uh, be a weighted uh, Hanrayu type of uh, uh, fly uh, combination nymph. Um, so uh, that will uh, show uh, while I'm uh, talking uh, uh, additionally. The um, title of this uh, uh, episode is uh, Ten Car Spirituality. And uh, as I was reflecting on this, I think this was the, the central experience that I have fishing uh, that I kind of wanted to then state in uh, terms of a, of a worldview. Um, and it's the experience, I think, that I keep uh, coming back to. This all started like when I was 12 or 13. I was in the Boy Scouts. I, uh, I went camping in the mountains of West Virginia on a scout trip. Uh, during the night, I had the opportunity to lie with my head sticking outside of a pup tent and could see the mountains and the stars particularly uh, without uh, light interference from a city uh, nearby. Uh, it was quite an experience. The the size, the the infinite uh, possibilities of of the universe uh, really struck me, and I had a, a number of different uh, feelings at the time. Uh, one of uh, kind of being part of all of this, but being such a minuscule part that it it defied description. Um, I think this was the beginning of then uh, what I would consider the construction and the deconstruction of my spiritual experiences uh, as a young, uh, young person. I had some other experiences like in the church at five years old and being inside a huge cathedral and having somewhat uh, uh, similar feelings. 
And by construction, I mean the you know the like the reconstruction of spiritual meanings uh, to me, but also the deconstruction of the meanings that I had been provided uh, in uh, up to that time. I continued on that path, um, and I had uh, these uh, experiences. It uh, pulled me out of uh, everydayness. Uh, and uh, kind of shook things up, but it was a, and it was a different way to then come back to ordinary reality and experience that uh, with new uh, insight. So, some of the uh, characteristics of the, these experiences were as follows: one, it, it's experiential. Uh, it's an experience. It's something that you sense and perceive and and uh, it's, it's grounded in, in this reality. Um, second, it's, it's transformational. It, it changes you in some way or other, mostly, I think, in, in, in conceptions. Um, I had a sense of belonging and yet being separate, uh, native and stranger was some terms that I had used at one point or other. And, it, and it's embodied. In other words, it, it, it's in, within my experience, so it's, it's not necessarily mental. Uh, and, and it has to do with, with reality of here and, here and now. There's an existential therapist by the name of uh, Ernesto Spinelli. He wrote, Practicing Existential Therapy. Um, and I ran across this in some of my clinical uh, um, thought. But one of the things that he talks about in this book is worlding and worldview. And that each of us is a worlding. In other words, we act. We're being in action constantly. He likes to think of Rather than calling yourself John or Bob or Larry, uh, you don't think of yourself as a noun. Think of yourself as a verb. So that you're constantly acting on a day-to-day -day basis. You're working, you're sleeping, you're eating, you're having fun, you're reading, you're doing all kinds of things uh, throughout, throughout the day and interacting with people. Um, out of all this comes a worldview, and I've mentioned this before, but this is a set of meanings and values uh, that you create uh, in this constant process of experiencing things and then transforming those things into stories or into, into value systems, belief systems, so forth. And that's what happens in Tenkara. I go out on the stream, and I'm hoping to get out pretty soon now that it's spring uh, here in Michigan. And we've had some nice weather, and I'm looking forward to getting back on the stream uh, quite soon, within the next few weeks. Um, but you get out on the stream, and you have this experience, and I know exactly when this experience of native and stranger. Um, I, I feel like I belong there. I'm part of it, yet I'm different from it in some significant ways. And that's the kind of experiential spirituality that, uh, that I constantly seek. I'm not really interested in disembodied spirituality or things that have, have no evidence uh, for them. I uh, want to be in touch with my experience and the Tenkara experience in itself satisfies these spiritual uh, needs. So uh, that's all I uh, wanted to talk about today. I think it, it's at the crux of, uh, of my um, activities as far as Tenkara is concerned uh, and looking forward to uh, getting back there real soon. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'll catch you the next time.